Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Joy and I'm a Nigerian immigrant living in Alberta, Canada. If you are new here, welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. So as you can see from this video, I'm going to be telling you about my PR timeline with a little bit of stories intertwined in between the timeline. Every date in my timeline had some sort of story attached to it and I'm going to be gracing you with that information today so i hope you do enjoy this video just sit back and watch this video to the end just before we continue please do not forget to give this video a big thumbs up comment down below what you enjoy the most about this video share this video with your friends those people that want to jackpot those people that want to relocate those people that want to come to canada church members everyone you know your colleagues and of course do not forget to hit the red subscribe button below and turn on the post notification bell beside it so that you can be notified when i post my very next video so let's dive right into it okay so let's start from the main the main beginning so like they usually say in the beginning or better still in the beginning yeah so we start from the beginning i did my aisle this is not so much part of the timeline but just to give you an idea of when i actually really started the processing so i did my ielts in october 2022 that was october 21 2022 and i received my result a week later which was like seven days later that was um october 28 2022 i did the computer-based test so i was able to receive the result within seven days i did all of that and i got a total of 7.5 my speaking was 8.5 reading and writing 7.0 and listening 6.5 Sometimes just a 0 0.5 in your IELTS that you didn't get can make you mix up to like 50 points when in the pool. It's really, really important. Like there's a way they grade it. They have the CLB, Canadian Language Benchmark. If you have 7.0 instead of 7.5, sometimes depending on exactly how it's graded, you can lose up to 50 or 60 points in the express entry pool. Anyway, let's leave IELTS. Let's go to West. So when I was done with IELTS and I was sure I had passed IELTS successfully, I decided to evaluate my bachelor's degree that's my degree in psychology you know a couple of people usually say oh for canada pr must you be working as what you studied no absolutely not i studied psychology for my bachelor's and i was working as something else like something totally different absolutely unrelated to even the health field at all or even social sciences <laughs> you don't have to be working as what you studied yeah, that's just a simple explanation. So now let's go into the in-depth thing. So I did my evaluation for my bachelor's degrees uh, with West. That took approximately about six weeks because um, I told my school to send my transcript and then Wes now sent um, an email to ask them if it's truly my transcript. And I'm like, it's not like I sent it. My school sent it. Why are you now sending another email? Well, the whole thing chat took like six weeks. <laughs> right so because it took like three weeks for my school to send it and then when west started their, their whole accident again it took about another three weeks for the response to be done and then in summary everything was done and my credentials that's my bachelor's was evaluated by the sixth week which was around the third week of december right so at that point in time, I didn't know what path to follow. So I had started creating a profile, but I didn't really do anything. Now, if you start creating a profile and you don't submit your profile within two months, it will be automatically cancelled. That means you're not ready, right? So I started creating a profile December 2022, but I didn't submit it because I needed to be sure of some things before I submitted it. So I decided to just wait till I was very sure. By the time I was very sure, this was around like March or April. So my initial application was automatically cancelled because I didn't finish it, <laughs> right? So by March, April, I knew exactly what I wanted. I knew it was Alberta nomination. or uh, That's the Alberta provincial nomination. So I decided I was going to apply for that. So I came in through the... We usually call it like a, a family draw, which means that you have an occupation in demand, which we call an we call NOC, an occupation in demand, which you have worked in for at least one year. That doesn't have to be your current job, 
but you must have worked there for at least one year and uh, you can make use of that. You can be working as something else, but you must have worked in that occupation for at least one year. I think within the last five or 10 years, one of the two, I can't remember if it was five or 10 years, but yeah. And then you'd be able to use that occupation and then you have a sibling in Alberta that would be a blood sibling in which you share at least one parent. You share either your father or mother or share both, right? So once you have a sibling like that, that's like a half sibling or you share both parents, then you are good to go. You can apply for the nomination, especially if you have the an occupation in demand, right? So basically while still contemplating to join the pool they did a family draw and i was like yo if i was in the pool maybe they would have picked me but oh, of course I, I i was in the pool so they wouldn't just come and pick me from from space right <laughs> so i decided to join the pool that day as if joining that day we now make them pick me when they have already done the draw i don't know why i was thinking that way but i was just feeling oh if i join now perhaps they're gonna pick me After the draw has been conducted. Anyway, fast forward, I joined the pool officially, like, and submitted my profile literally that same day. Uh, that was April 21, 2023, which was last year. So April 21, 2023, I joined the pool and I submitted that very day, right? Because I had uh, um, confirmations of everything I needed. So I went ahead and uh, waited for the next draw. The next draw came, and for one reason or the other, I was not picked. I went to my profile and I looked at this profile. This profile, who are you? <laughs> I'm kidding. So I made some adjustments here or there, which I thought could strengthen my application. And I remained in the pool. I was having the thoughts of actually sending expression of interest to some other provinces. But I was like, okay, let me give Albert some other tries. And if it doesn't work by the next draw i would send expression of interest to some other provinces i had some other provinces in mind so for alberta you don't send an expression of interest they send you a notification of interest if they feel that you are eligible so they just pick from the pool uh and the good part about alberta is that you just need to have over 300 right it doesn't have to be like over 400 like some other provinces or around score for the normal draw no once you have up to 300 above 300 most of the draw scores are like 302 310 you know so i had 396 as at the time i entered the pool so now news flash my score was way lower than i thought it would be when i entered the pool i thought it was going to be between like 420 something to 460 something only for me to submit and i see 396 and i'm like nibu anyway fast forward to <laughs> I, me joining the pool so i stayed in the pool and then june 1st came and i got my notification of interest from Alberta. So that was on June 1, 2023, which was about six weeks after I entered the pool. So I got my notification of interest and I needed to get reference letters from my current place of work and my previous places of work, which included where I had my the NOC that I was using. So the NOC I used was in my previous place of work. So yes, you can use something for your previous place of work. I got my reference letters, so the whole process of getting my reference letters and some of the documents I needed took quite some time. So I got it on a Thursday night, which was June 1st. So on June 2nd, I submitted my letter of acceptance to Alberta. You usually have to submit a letter of acceptance within 30 days of getting the notification of interest and you have 60 days to submit your application. So I submitted mine the next day, which was June 2nd, it was on a Friday, and by the evening of June 3rd, I got a link to apply for it, and I gathered up my references and everything I needed, documentation and all of that, and I submitted it, which was awesome, it was great. So I submitted on June 12th, after gathering all the information I needed to gather. And by July 25, checked when I checked my Alberta portal, it uh, showed assigned for assessment. So my application was assigned for assessment. And by July 26th, I got my nomination. <laughs> so that was like 600 extra points. So by the time I added it to my 396, that was supposed to be nine, almost one key, but it was like 1,000, but they removed a few marks. You know, they did eventually put the entire 600, but it didn't really matter because I had 985. 
after my nomination, which automatically qualified me for the next draw. Right, the timeline between the time I submitted my application to the time I got my nomination was just about six weeks. I think about six weeks and two days thereabout. So yeah, that was good. So I automatically qualified for the next draw under the invitations to apply. And by August 1st, they did uh, a federal draw, not provincial now, you know, we have left the Alberta phase. So they did the federal draw and uh, of course i was called to apply i got my documentations in terms of uh, proof of funds police character certificates for the police character certificate i did it on august 1st and then i sorted out my other documentation my reference letters uh yeah so you know alberta didn't ask for proof of funds so i didn't need to submit that that was one good thing about Alberta. and once you have uh just about 300 above 300 as at the time I applied and you have a NOC like uh, occupation in demand then you're good to go so if you have a sibling living in Alberta who is a citizen or permanent resident in which you are related by either one parent or both parents you would be qualified under the sibling draw that's the family draw for Alberta but um, I don't think they have done that draw this year so um, but it rained last year like it rained with that, with that last year. Like that's what it was like the easiest part we ever. So uh, yeah, at the beginning of 2023, I sat around like January 2023. I saw that um, you know they were doing that, and I was like, I can partake of this. <laughs> so yeah, I had 396, and then. Cut off for most draws were like 302, 350 something. So yeah, definitely I was going to qualify, right? So, but I just thought that was just God's way of helping because with my 396, I'm not sure of what I was going to be able to do. But, oh well, <laughs> look at how God did it. Yeah, so I got my documentation for my main application post ITA. I now had to sort out proof of funds since I had nothing to do with it in the Alberta phase, in the provincial nomination phase. And then my other documents, you know, of course you put in your other documents and then you put in your history, whatever you have been doing yourself, um, educational, career-wise, voluntary, volunteer, family life and stuff like that in the past 10 years. Right, so they usually want to know that information, and it's important that you're truthful about it to avoid uh, them saying that, that you misrepresented your application, and then they could either reject your application, or if they even reject your application, maybe you can apply immediately again. But if they feel there's a misrepresentation in your application, they can ban you for five years. <laughs> yeah, so you have to be truthful in everything you are doing there because they will find you online. Yeah. Like, are you not on LinkedIn? Are you not on Facebook, Instagram? They will find you online. And of course, you have to be sure that whatever information you have online matches what you have in your application. Because if on your application you said you're an accountant between 2020 and 2022, your LinkedIn profile can't now be saying you're a medical doctor. Like, it does not even correlate, right? Are you going to be an accounting medical doctor, right? It's not even related. So you have to make sure that your social profiles matches. Like um, if you're doing anything voluntary, it doesn't really matter. They just want to find out that information. It's not like they're using it for anything. The main thing is your application. You would need uh, documentation from for them. But the things you put in your history, you don't need documentation for them, right? Some random certificates you took, voluntary um organizations that you partnered with and stuff like that or that you joined you don't really need documentation for that there are a couple of things you don't need documentation for and anything you did outside 10 years like earlier than 10 years you don't need documentation for that so i think usually it's usually either the last 10 years or since you were 18 whichever one came last or whichever one came first so if you're like 38 then you just do the last 10 years because you were probably 18, 20 years earlier. So you can't be doing 20 years. So I think the one that came last. So if you're like way more than 18, you just do the last 10 years. So let's say you are 23. 
then you would be doing the last five years because you are doing since you were 18, right? There's some math there that is not mathing, but I hope you get the drift. Either since you were 18 to your current age or the last 10 years. So if you are 24, you do from 18 to 24. If you are 28, then it's still 10 years. <laughs> whether you've been, whether since when you were 18 or the last 10 years. If you are 30, so that would just be the last 10 years, like since you were 20. Anyway, you fill up everything you did your entire life. It's a lot of, you know, process. But yeah, you fill it up. And then don't just tell lies there. If they ask if you've been denied visa before or deported, just be truthful because US, UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, they have the same database and they can see it in the flip of a second. Yeah. So, well, maybe not the flip of a second, but yeah, they can see it. So you should be truthful. And then because if you lie, that's misrepresentation and they will reject your application. Or better still ban you for five years so beware yeah so eventually i submitted my application on 12th of august because that was the day i did my uh, medicals i booked my medicals two days after my nomination i decided to book it on a saturday because that was just going to be easier for me to just move around because of the timing of how long i thought it was going to take so i booked it with q life and honestly as at the time i came there wasn't really much crowd as at the time i was leaving it was busier than i came so um i'm glad i even came early i came around like 7 7 30 so they attended to me faster because i met a couple of people there and it was like first come first serve um, and then a couple of them were either going for i think uk visa or us visa so uh, it was easy for it to get to my turn i think i was like the second person going for the canadian medicals yeah so i did all of that uh which was on the 12th of um August Q life was really nice. I spent just about three hours there. But that's because I came around like seven. They didn't start to like eight thirty. So it just took about one hour, one and a half hours for the actual process. Because I was like among the first batch of people they attended to since I came early. So on um August twelfth, I did make sure I put in all my information. Like it was a whole lot. <laughs> I it was really really draining trying to submit it that day because <laughs> a whole lot of documentation like a whole lot police character certificate so i did my police character certificate on august 4th and i did the whole bank thing all the stuff i needed from the bank of documentation i needed from the bank like the the week i submitted like so earlier in the week i submitted on saturday so i did it earlier that week see around 7th 8th there about so uh you know sometimes you need like uh usually need like a letter from the bank stating that you actually have an account with them then of course you have like your proof of funds and stating oh this is where the funds came from like some people have to state oh from the sale of a land or from your sales commission from work or from your salary or however it is that you got your proof of funds you're going to have like an explanation of that <laughs> kind of explanation somewhere stating where the funds generated from right so it can be a combination of sources it doesn't have to be from just one source right anything can be a combination of sources for you so i put together all my information so for the medicals you know this was as at august that was the time where we're still doing medicals before submitting you know now there's usually a medical um, instruction letter after you submit um, and they process your eligibility then um there is the uh, medical instruction letter, the way we used to have our menstrual instruction letter. So we were to do our medicals and submit when you've done the medicals. So you can't do it without the medicals. So I, I, that was the only reason why I waited till 12th because I wanted to submit earlier. <laughs> but then I'm glad I waited till 12th of August because I was even busy during the week and that 12th was a Saturday. So I was able to like calm down and actually do it well. And I made sure I was very, very articulate and meticulous. Like you have to be very, very articulate and met meticulous about everything because there are different placeholders for each file and you must not mix them up. Like you must not mix them up. Like if you have a spouse and kids, you must not mix up anybody's name with anybody's file. You can put um, your son's your son's file in your daughter's own. Or if you have twins, you can put... Um, Ties documents in case in this file. No, that's gonna be like a fill, an auto fill, right? Uh, maybe not auto fill, but like they would just reject your application for one funny mistake or the other. And to be very honest, that's where 
prayers come in sometimes, right? It's like, in fact, the whole process, that's where prayers come in, such that they give you the opportunity to correct that mistake with an additional document request, rather than just sending you an outright rejection, right? Maybe saying you're misrepresenting or for one thing or the other that you did or that you didn't do well. So basically, I submitted on August 12th. It took me like seven hours, five to seven hours to put everything together. Yeah, it was a very, very draining process, but I made sure I had to do it because I was going to be busy the remaining part of the weekend. The next day was Sunday and I was going to be so busy. So I made sure I did that. And I was like, if it means me sleeping past midnight today, I'm going to just do it. And I submitted around, we say like almost 12 midnight. And I got my acknowledgement of receipt immediately. It, it, the date showed August 13th, which was the next day, and I was wondering how and why, but it didn't really matter. I had gotten my acknowledgement of receipt, which was great. And then, yeah, um, I didn't hear again from RSCC until August 31st, in which they sent me the biometric instruction letter and an additional document request. I responded to the additional document request. It was a little bit confusing, and I think it was some information I was not interested in giving later in the in the um, application in which they were not asking for and I'm like why are you still asking for this information but I was able to find my way around it and actually submit the information they needed for the additional document request and the biometric instruction letter I booked my biometrics that same day for September 7th which was about a week later exactly a week later I think I got this um biometric instruction letter on a Thursday evening I was booking it for the following Thursday morning right so that you know I would be able to just plan ahead and plan towards it I submitted my additional document request on September 1st which was the next day the very next day so usually you would know when you have ADR they can sometimes send it to your email or they will send you an email saying you have some information on your account so you go there and see so for the biometrics instruction letter i think that was like an information letter and they tell you how to book your biometrics you can should check online the vfs website vfs global on how to book your biometrics you would usually find out it can sometimes be taking you around around in circles but you will eventually do it right so you can just check maybe like later closer to the evening when maybe people are sleeping or whatever but you can just keep checking until you are finally able to book a time there sometimes it goes fast or it may not be that fast but you finally book when it's kind of free but there are sometimes these slots are always filled up you just have to keep checking if you're able to reschedule yeah fine you reschedule and you should try not to miss your biometrics because to try to do it that same day is another issue unless you want to reschedule if you don't live in lagos it's advisable that you come the day before and sleep over around there most likely even around the island because the vfs office is at lekki so you can sleep around there or try to navigate from the message you've been in Lagos, you try to navigate from the mainland to the island very quickly, very early in the morning uh, because there can be quite some traffic grid. I don't know what it is like now, but at that time there was quite some traffic grid and you don't want to be late. Like, that's one thing I didn't want to be. So I was able to create my tracker after submitting my additional document request and booking my biometrics. So by 5th of October, IRCC sent me an email that they have received my documents and accepted my documents which was good to know right so this was 5th of september and we had we usually have four parameters that's uh, medicals biometrics eligibility and background check so as at this point in time i passed medicals already which is awesome and then based on the ADR i submitted i now passed eligibility the bunga eligibility i had passed it so that was two parameters out of four, 50%, 50% to go. Then I did my biometrics on September 7, which was two days after that. And before I got home, the biometrics was already linked. And by the next day, the biometrics was now completed. So that was three parameters completed out of four. Biometrics, medicals, and eligibility. It was remaining background check. So that was September 7th, as that all of that happened on September 8th because it updated on September 8th. It usually updates like a day later, it just says, Oh, we got your inquiry, or it just does ghost, ghost updates usually to show that something happened on your account. And by the next day, you are usually able to see it. So, um, now fast forward to the following month, I kept calling IRCC each week 
just to find out exactly where is my file now, where is my visa office and stuff like that. And they were nice enough to give me that information. The wait time is not so funny, but <laughs> I just wanted to know. I was just kind of like anxious and I wanted to know and I'm glad I was calling them. The week I finally even got all parameters completed, I wasn't even thinking about it. I don't even think I even checked that week. So that week was customer service week and I was busy all through at work. So I didn't really check. So on the last working day, of that week which was friday i just casually decided to just check my account so that week i hadn't called ircc because i was super busy <laughs> so on friday evening on my way back home inside damn full bus i can't remember if it was white or yellow damn full bus but i was somewhere inside damn full bus and i decided to check my portal and i saw ghost update so ghost update is when you see last updated today, you see today's date, so that's updated today, but you check and you don't see any updates. Yeah, that's really a ghost update. So, but then by the next day, you will usually see what it was, right? Sometimes it could be, oh, we received your inquiry. So if you if you call them, you usually, they usually take note of that and you see that in your account. Or maybe eligibility is now complete or something is now complete. Oh, so I felt, okay, so since today is Friday and Monday was to be their public holiday, which was supposed to be Thanksgiving as at that day, I was like, okay, I'll probably see the information on Tuesday. But on Monday, I decided to just casually check and yeah, it was there. Background check completed. So like all parameters completed. I was so, super excited. I think I even screamed a bit in the office and I'm sure they must have been wondering, what is wrong with this one? <laughs> so, <laughs> right, but of course, I wasn't going to say anything. I was not going to say anything, right? Two days later, which was October 11th, I had the final decision on my account. And on October 12th, I checked my portal and I saw the confirmation of permanent residency number. I was super excited because once you see that number, just know it has been approved. It's not exactly the final decision that says so. But the, once you see confirmation of permanent residency, even before you see your passport request, just know that it has been approved. Like that was so, so, so obvious. Like it has been approved. Okay, so it's not obvious, but yeah, that's just something to look out for. I, like I was super excited. I praised God like so much. Like I was just in awe of God's wonders. Like He is the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything to hide for Him to do? When the time is right. He's the Lord who make it happen. He, he makes all things beautiful in his time. He really does. So put your trust in him and he will perfect his will in your life. So I was super excited. I was so grateful to God. I really celebrated myself because that journey was not easy. Uh, yeah, so that was us at October 12th. Super happy. And then this was on a Thursday evening. I was seeing the confirmation of permanent residency. And by October 16, I got my passport request. <laughs> and then that's when I started telling a couple of my family members that, oh, I've gotten a passport request. Immediate family members, like, yeah. I didn't just go, wow, and announce it to the world. No, <laughs> nah. <laughs> Most people didn't even know I was coming to Canada until I got here. So, but that's by the way. Now, one of romantic things this will be there. So first of all, let's rewind. Let's rewind. So for the additional document request, I saw a request letter and I'm like, which one is request letter again? Because for the biometric slaughter, I saw information letter. I was like, okay. And then I saw a request letter. I was like, okay. Now, wow. <laughs> so anyway, the important thing was to submit it. And then for the passport request, they just said, oh, there's a message in your account. And then I came and saw something something letter i think i i was thinking maybe i would see ready for visa or passport request but i think it was request letter they said or something or information letter something that does not even look like passport passport request at all to so make matters worse i downloaded the <laughs> the document you know i started reading it and i'm like what's this <laughs> because i saw we need some information to finish processing your application you have to submit your passport within 30 days of receiving this letter and i'm like ah <laughs> you would think it's something else they are talking about passport request documents can confuse you i was so confused i was like oh this is the passport request though hey <laughs> 
Anyway, I was actually quite excited, even though I had blown up all the excitement on the confirmation of permanent, permanent residency day. <laughs> so, I, I already knew it was approved, so I was already so excited since that day, right up until the day of the passport request. You know, for that one, I was expecting to see for the passport request maybe an email that says, Oh, ready for visa, not right inside my portal, right? I was expecting to see like a really nice real email that said, Ready for visa, passport request for where? Then we have a letter in your account. <laughs> you have some changes to your account, some information on your account. And I'm like, okay. And I went there and I'm seeing a confusing <laughs> note. Not knowing that it's password request. Anyway, okay, so I was super excited and I went to submit my passport on October 19th. And uh, I received count of well on November 17th. And they told me my, my tracker was closed because once you receive counter for that means your visa is approved. And then they said this application is closed. Wow. I was so happy and so grateful to God. <sighs> because who says it's in a comment to pass on if the Lord has not commanded it? He's indeed the God of all flesh. There's nothing too hard for him to do. You know, so I got counter for on 17th of November. And uh, on my track, I said application closed because you have already gotten it now. So what are you expecting? Application closed. And yeah, I, I was really, really happy. And I received my passport back from Ghana because I sent it to Accra, Ghana on November 27th. So it took about, I think about five to six weeks before from the day I submitted to the day I actually got it back. I think the time I went to go and collect it, I was on, I was even on leave. I was taking my final leave. I decided to like take my leave to be able to plan some things, you know, towards the trip. From the day I entered the pool till my PPR date, that's my passport request date, it was five months and three weeks. So it wasn't even up to six months. So for nomination, it was say about six weeks. And for, you know, in between, you know, there's some waiting period here and there. <laughs> From the day I submitted, my main application that's um, post ITA after invitation to apply to so the day I got it it was say about two months two months and four days so I submitted August 12th and I got my passport request on October 16th so two months and four days which was about nine weeks something like that which was nine weeks thereabouts uh let's just say nine weeks and two days or so something like that so yeah I'm so grateful to God for this so when I got back my passport, I went to go and just uh, renew the passport ASAP. So yeah, you can have your passport, your old passport with the visa, but then you can renew your passport like five years or 10 years. Because my passport was going to expire this year and I didn't want to start looking for how to travel to Ottawa to renew the passport. And I even heard that it's quite, quite rowdy. So I just renewed my passport back in Nigeria. And it's been really blissful. It's been really wonderful. I thank God for everything. So that's my PR timeline. <laughs> yeah, I know it was quite a long one, but I hope you learned something from this. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this video so, so much. Thank you so much for watching this video till this point. If you enjoyed this video, please do not forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Comment down below what you think about this video, what your own PR timeline was or your study permit timeline was. And if you learned anything in this video, please just put that down in the comment section. If you're in this process as well, please put that down in the comment section. Yeah, I hope this video is encouraging for you, for anyone who is looking to relocate or immigrate to Canada. I hope this video was of great help to you. And I'm so glad to have you here. Also, please do not forget to share this video with everyone you know, your friends, your family members, your colleagues, your church members, anybody you can find in the whole wide world, share this video with them. On your social media platforms or your WhatsApp status, please share this video with them. And of course, do not forget to hit the red subscribe button and turn on the post notification bell beside it so that you can be notified when i post my next video and you can put in the comment section any other immigration topics you want me to talk about and i'll try to make a video on the best that i can so for those that asked for provincial nomination video 
you see this video i did today for my timeline that's basically going to be it i may do a dedicated video for the alberta provincial nomination but yeah you have to use this one for now until then so until then keep glowing Mwah. <laughs> bye